wait until you guys see the stuff that we're covering today it is actually pretty crazy now if you're just listening to me right now check out the screen so that you can see the articles we're going to actually be covering but i quickly want to show you why ai interests me so much you see the gameplay that you're watching right now this i finally remembered to show you guys the 16 by 9 aspect ratio for nintendo games super nintendo games sega genesis games all of these old school retro video games as you guys just barely witnessed guess what that is not borders that is a full-blown 16 by 9 aspect ratio so chat with nvidia's rtx chatbot is what i'm showing you guys right now introducing chat with rtx in simple terms this right now is only chat gpt it's not anything mind-boggling but because it's nvidia there are going to be other additions to this again if you're just listening to me right now check out the screen because i'm playing a trailer from nvidia this is available to everybody watching this video right now if you have a 30 series graphics card or if you have a 40 series graphics card if you got a 20 series your sl sol if you got an old gtx graphics card your sol but what you can do with this is pretty neat it's more of like a it's like a pc chat gpt it's nothing super special like i'm saying here but it's pretty cool that NVIDIA is getting into the AI game. As you can see right here, the app is available now for the 30 series and 40 series of GPUs. This right here is the new Intel Core i9 14900KS. Forgot to say to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. I hate saying it because you probably hate me saying it, but if I do not say it, like 1% of you will actually do it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. The unreleased Core i9-14900KS has been spotted in the OCCT benchmark database with a supposed multiplier of 62. It's aiming at 6.2 gigahertz and is going to have a peak wattage exceeding 400 watts. Crikey's! Oh my goodness, the crocodile hunter guy. So, the benchmark in question does offer a little insight into the proposed computer chip, the maximum configuration maximum p core clock from 6 gigahertz on the 4900k to 6.2 gigahertz on the ks version so the p cores appear to be operating around 5.5 gigahertz at 409 watts and 5.7 gigahertz at 387 watts so that's everything there that we need to go over then right here amd is prepping a more affordable next generation navi 48 gpu for later on this year with up to rx 7900 xtx performance now i don't understand i'm just being honest right now i don't really understand when articles go about explaining stuff in this manner yes flagship navi 48 may be monolithic die manufactured through tsmc's n4p process per the same rumors there have been strix apu and rdna 4 discrete gpu engineering samples boosting between 3 and 3.3 gigahertz according to a report from a youtuber moore's law is dead it also may feature a die size of 300 to 350 millimeters squared with 20 gigabytes per second gddr six memory on a 256 bit memory controller which should match up to the ps5 pro console rdna4 could be a serious threat to nvidia's 40 series gpus rdna4s are progressively ready from sounds like performance can match 7900 xtx performance <laughs> around 500 dollars buyer who box at 800 dollars I have high functioning autism guys so it's it's pretty hard for me to focus on reading because i hate reading okay so nvidia's original gtx titan benchmark 11 years later i just thought this was pretty cool and i want to show you guys so the gtx titan 2024 game benchmarks so if that other article showed something like this i'd understand it this is at 1920 by 1080p full hd average fps just saying Crisis Remastered only achieved 31 FPS on a GTX Titan. And then we got all these. So I just thought this was funny. <laughs> you remember how much this was back in the day? Wasn't it like, wasn't it like 1500 bucks? Basically the price of a 4080. I know it was, I know it was a lot of money, especially back then. So if we take that $1,500 GPU, the is basically the RX 6400. So this right here, we're actually getting at least a little bit more up there in the FPS. So the average FPS looks to be like, I want to say like 40, 
or something. But either way, I just thought this was kind of funny because of how much it, it used to cost. So this right here, AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X 3D CPU bundle drops to an incredibly low $450 US and it comes with a B650 motherboard and 32 gigabytes of memory. So if we go over here to Micro Center, this is where this deal is. I'll go ahead and toss a link down in the description if you guys would like to uh, go and grab this, but I'm sure whatever that or if you have a local micro center i am so jealous if you actually do but either way you can see right here you're saving 200 dollars on this little bundle right here i've used this motherboard i i know for a fact i've used that for intel it or whatever intel's version of this i'm pretty sure intel's version of that is a B, b760 but i could be wrong about that um but I have used it. The motherboard works perfectly fine. And it does have the BIOS flash, which you're not going to have to do for this because it's dedicated for AMD. But either way, I just thought I just wanted to share that with you because that's a super killer deal. So NVIDIA's new Pro GPU costs less than $650. The RTX 2088 generation arrives with 2,816 CUDA cores and 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Wow. Everybody's so excited. RTX 2088 generation is up to 1.6 times faster than the previous RTX A2000. So if we come down here, the, eight, the RTX 2088 generation specifications. So you can see the architecture, the found, uh, yeah, my webcam's on the way. The architecture, the foundry, the process size, the transistors, the die size, the CUDA parallel processing cores, the NVIDIA tensor cores, the NVIDIA RT cores, single precision performance, RT core performance, tensor performance, GPU memory, memory interface, memory bandwidth, max power consumption, graphics bus, display connectors, form factor, product weight, thermal solution and then nvenc and nvdec i've never i haven't even seen this encoder in obs at least or any of my video editors but then we have the 4000 series the 2000 and then the a2000 so that's what the comparison is and then if we come down here we got more we got the graphics card and then we also have the a2000 the cat application performance rendering performance virtual reality performance 3d modeling performance generative AI performance, video editing performance. So that's pretty good for, I mean, I don't know why they're releasing this graphics card right now. I'm guessing it's to get rid of hardware. So the A2000 was available in six gigabytes and 12 gigabyte variants. The RTX ADA generation is only gonna be covering with 16 gigabytes. So there you go. To everybody that's always saying the 4060 Ti is a poo, whatever graphics card. There you go. You got you got yourself a different graphics card that doesn't have eight gigabytes of memory. <laughs> but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video.